In, good morning. In this video, um, we're going to start our discussion of uh, the transport properties um, of ideal gases. Uh, and, but first, we have to lay some groundwork, and we're going to do this in a very simple fashion. Uh, much of this follows, um, follows Vincenti and Kruger's physical gas dynamics, a course that I took from Charles Kruger when I was in graduate school. So we're going to start out with this molecular picture of dynamic behavior. So consider a gas in a state of equilibrium inside a cubicle box. We know that the molecules are zooming around, um, banging perhaps into each other and uh, with the walls. But in this first little instance, we're just going to assume that the molecules do not collide with each other and the collisions with the wall uh, take place specularly, which means um, that energy is completely conserved, and with speed unchanged. These assumptions are untrue, uh, but for an ideal gas, it doesn't really matter. So given these uh, assumptions, the situation as is in this um, figure. So we're just following a molecule that has a speed c, uh, regardless of its direction, uh, and it, it zooms across the box, bounces into the wall, uh, reflects off at an equal but opposite angle, and so on. Um, when it collides with the wall, its velocity perpendicular to the wall is reversed, but its speed is unchanged. Um, the magnitudes of the components have fixed values, uh, C1, C2, and C3. Um, by the way, it is typical to use the term C for speed or velocity of a molecule um, uh, in in, at the macroscopic level, we usually use the term um, u or v uh, for speed or velocity, and uh, we or we talk about the velocity components u sub x, u sub uh, y, u sub z, etc. Anyway, uh, so the magnitude of the components have fixed values. So, and there are three components. It would be c1, c2, c3 for the three coordinate directions, and the sum of the squares of the three components is equal to the square of the uh, absolute speed. So uh, we can do a little exercise by noting that the force on, the given, on a given wall depends on the number of collisions per unit time and the change in momentum per collision. If L is the length of the box, the time to travel between walls is, uh, say, in the one direction, L over uh, the absolute value of C1. And since there are two traverses per collision with one wall, the number of collisions per unit time is absolute value of C1 divided by 2L. The change in the X1 momentum per collision is 2M times the absolute value of C1. And the magnitude of the total change in X1 momentum per unit time, which is the force exerted on the wall by the molecule, is the change in momentum times the collision frequency, and that turns out to be mc squared over L. Um, since the area of the wall is L squared, then the pressure on the wall is mc squared um, 1, m m c 1 squared, I'm sorry, divided by L cubed, or mc 1 squared divided by the volume. Now, the gas mixture is composed of a large number of molecules of different uh, mass, MA, say MB, and so on, and speed, CA, CB, and so on, so that the total pressure exerted on the wall is equal to the sum, uh, is equal to 1 over the volume times the sum uh, uh, for a given direction, for a uh, given wall of MZ, CZ squared um, uh, uh, in that one direction. Since the gas in equilibrium is in equilibrium, this will also be pressure on all the other walls. Taking the sum and dividing by 3, we get that the pressure is one-third, or 1 over 3 times the volume, uh, times the sum of the mc c squares. And since the total energy of translation of the molecules is one-half uh, mc squared, sum over all of the molecules, we can write that PV is equal to two-thirds e of the translation. And if we consider the perfect gas law, where n is the number of moles, we know that PV equals nRT, where R is the universal gas constant. 
And if we compare the two, we get E translation is equal to 3 halves N R universal T. Or uh, that's, well, we'll get to that in this next slide. R U is the universal gas constant per mole, uh, 8.314621 joule per mole degree Kelvin. Uh, the gas constant per molecule is Boltzmann's constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 3. 23 joules per degree Kelvin. So that the average kinetic energy per mole or molecule is either 3 halves times the universal gas constant times T or 3 halves KT. Now we've ignored any internal molecular structure, so translation provides the entire internal energy of the gas. Therefore, the specific heat is equal to the partial of E with T, and that turns out to be 3 halves times the universal gas constant in molar, unit, molar units. Uh, for an ideal gas, C sub P minus C sub V is R, and C sub P is 5 halves times the gas constant. So the ratio of specific heats is gamma is 5 thirds. So we can estimate molecular speeds. The mean square speed is C squared bar is equal to the sum of MC squared over the sum of the masses. And noting noting that the density is mass divided by volume, uh, then P over rho is equal to one-third C squared bar. P is also equal to, uh, P over rho is also equal to RT, so um, we can get C squared from this, and it turns out that the, the uh, root mean square of the molecular speed for air is about 506.5 meters per second. So now um, we let's talk about collisions, collisions between molecules, which we've ignored so far. Um, the average spacing is going to be um, equal to the cube root divided by 1 over the number density. However, the average distance between collisions can be quite large, or can be larger in an event. The average distance is called the mean free path. So um, first of all, consider um, the following definition, the sphere of influence. So if we have two molecules that touch each other, then, and they're the same size, um, then the, in, the, the center to center spacing is equal to the diameter of the molecules. Uh, but another way to look at it is if we take twice the diameter, that forms a sphere. Um, and if another molecule's center uh, enters that sphere, then it, a collision can be said to have taken place. In other words, it's entered the sphere of influence of the molecule. Now, the actual path followed by molecules is quite random. So we can do a simple back-of-the-envelope calculation by straightening out the path. Let's just assume the molecules are going straight. And let's assume that the speed of the molecule is equal to the average molecular speed then the sphere of influence sweeps out a cylindrical volume per unit time of pi d squared times the velocity, times the speed. And so the number of collisions per unit time turns out to be equal to pi d squared c bar times the number density. So that's a number of collisions per unit time, and we call that theta. So the average distance traveled per collision is going to be the average speed divided by theta, the collision frequency. And that is, we'll call L, and it's equal to 1 over pi d squared times the number density. Now, it turns out that better theory, collision theory, gives throws in a square root of 2, so that the mean free path is 1 over the square root of 2 pi d squared times n. And the collision frequency is the square root of 2 pi um, d squared c bar n. Okay, the collision, the quantity sigma equals pi d squared can be thought of as a cross section for the collision so that we can write the mean free path as 1 over the square root of 2 sigma n or theta is equal to the square root of 2 sigma c bar n. Um, and now we can calculate the ratio of the mean free path to the average spacing, that is going to be equal to 
the cube root of the number density divided by 2 pi square root of 2 pi d squared n. And you run the numbers. It's 1 over the square root of 2 pi times the average spacing divided by the diameter. So here are some numbers. Uh, these numbers happen to be for hydrogen. Uh, the number density at standard temperature and pressure from the ideal gas law is 2.7 times 10 to the 24 per meter cube. The collision diameter is 2.7 angstroms. So the average spacing between uh, molecules is 34.45 angstroms. Angstrom is 10 to the minus 10 meters. But the mean free path, on the other hand, is 1,262 angstrom, angstroms. In other words, the ratio of the mean free path to uh, the average spacing is 36.6. A way to think about this is you're walking on a sidewalk. There's a fair number of people, but you don't happen to run into any of them because you can fit through the spaces between them. And that's exactly what happens on average in a colliding gas mixture. So here are some other numbers. Um, the average speed for hydrogen uh, is 17 and eight, 1782 meters per second. This is a very uh, light molecule, hence a higher average speed. And the collision frequ frequency is 1.4 times 10 to the 10 per second. Collision frequencies are typically quite large on the order of 10 to the 10 per second. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for listening and have a great day.